All right, Brakatia Howl, Brakatia Howl Shy, Brakatia Howl, Brakatia Howl Shy, Brakatia Howl, Brakatia Howl Bashim Yahweh Shy Bashim, Regal Kodash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Uh, salutations to the whole for the left out there, you Akim, Sadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the priest Shaman, uh, this week's topic is going to be entitled, Why are the heathens called anointed? You know, you had different heathens throughout the scriptures that were deemed anointed of the Heavenly Father. Even the so-called white man himself uh, was called the anointed cherub. All right, so I want to go into the understanding of that. And pretty much the reason I'm doing this is so you don't understand that um, when these when the scriptures speak about these heathens being anointed, all right, it doesn't mean that they were created for salvation or some sort of deliverance. It means that they were anointed for the purpose of, of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's prophecies, right? Um, um, I got a picture of Robert Robert um, J. Robert Oppenheimer, father of the atomic bomb. All right, uh, quoted the Bhagavad Gita and said, "Now I am become the now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds." Well, the Most High anointed him, and the rest with him. All right, to fulfill Isaiah the 54th chapter. All right, he created the smith that blowed the coal in the fire just to create another war instrument to what? Further prophecies. So they were anointed for that purpose. Do, or they now, are they anointed to be saved? Oh, hell no. All right, salvation is of the Jew. Salvation is only for the children of Israel. Also, I want to say, um, whatever respected channel you're watching this on where I upload the camp teaching videos, pardon me, I had an um, error where I thought I was... Um, removing the bad copy and accidentally removed uh last week's channel or last week's camps uh video on the this Vile kingdom page and this week's is just got me banging my head on the wall but um now i know what the error was what what why that was happening so if your brothers waiting for this or uh, you know the, the ones that believe are waiting for the street videos um low willing next week you know they'll be coming up with no issues low willing now without further ado Isaiah 45 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. Now the Mosai said, He's his anointed, he's his Amashiach, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations. So the Mosai raised up King Cyrus, and we're going to see for what purpose. Before him, and I will loose his loins of kings to open before him the two. Levit gates and the gates shall not be shut. Now, Isaiah was on the scene about 150 years, over 100 years, maybe 120, 150, uh, before King Cyrus even stepped foot on the scene. But here he is oh, being mentioned. Same thing with Alexander was already mentioned in the book of Daniel before he was hundreds of years before he was even born, right? So the Mosai prophetically was using these heathens. All right, to fulfill a purpose. What's that purpose? Let's jump to Isaiah, the 44th chapter, 28 verse. It says, Thus saith, that's like Isaiah 44, 28, that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. All right, now a shepherd uh, take care of the sheep, you know. That's how come you, um in the pictures where you see a king, and he has a scepter in his hand and a crown upon his head. That goes back to the Hebrew word Allah right which god's power judges all right now if you look at the hebrew character ah all right it's a cattle and the cattle has the horns that's how come them crowns have horns on them you know you look at crowns how they go they got the it's supposed to represents the horn of the cattle and then la all right which is uh lamad learned all right but it's a it's, it's in the symbol of a shepherd's staff all right so Allah literally means a, you, literally you can see a crown and a scepter, a, a, a crown and a, 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 a shepherd's staff. All right, so that's how come you see that you know again royals and and nobles they have the crown which represents the horn, and they have the the, uh, the shepherd's staff which is the law. Right, so Cyrus was a shepherd. He was a king. He was a he was a he's a ruler over many, and should perform all my pleasure. All the Most High's pleasure, even saying, which is even is old English for which is saying to Jerusalem, "Thou shalt, thou shalt be built, and to and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid." So the, that was his purpose. 
that was it. It was always about Israel. It's all it's all about Jake. The, the Mosai moves these chess pieces, these nations, to really for for the purpose of his own people. You know, whether it's to bring us into captivity, subdue us, um, bring us back to our homeland, set up certain prophecies. It's all about Jake at the end of the day. Right? So these heathens as a whole, they're not nothing. They're really just servants on the loose. But the most I will jump on the spirit of some of these guys, all right, to do huge things concerning his people. And that's what King Cyrus was for. So when, when you read about, uh, you know, particular heathens being um, anointed or ordained or set up for a purpose, it doesn't mean the most I loves them. It doesn't mean the most I gives two shits about them, really. The most is just using them as tools, all right, for his people. Um. I think I'm, before I go to the next scripture, I want to bring out the example we had at camp. Actually, let me bring out another one. Let's bring out this guy, Nebuchadnezzar, right? Remember we uh, remember how King Cyrus was deemed a shepherd of the Heavenly Father? Check this one out too. Jeremiah 27 and 6. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field, um, have I give him also to serve to serve him see so nebuchadnezzar was called a servant there's another scripture where he's called a shepherd so let me get that one too he's called a shepherd just like there's one in jeremiah where he's called the shepherd Let's see if i can find it All right, well, they got a servant here, but I believe there's one where he's called the shepherd of the Most High. But uh, pretty much, let me read the scripture again. It's locked here. Um, it says, um, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant and the beast of the field, have I given him to serve him? I have given him. Very, sim very similar to Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. We know the wicked is the so-called white man, but he didn't do anything per se out of his own willpower all right to will himself um and to get in the power of the planet earth that was given to him by the most high all right man i just had one in isaiah talked about pretty much uh let's see if this links with this one Mm. Yeah, so just like how you had a heathen Balaam that would pro that would prophesy everything uh, positive about Jake, all right? The Most High again used a, a heathen to voice his, uh, his his thoughts, man. So let me go to this account. We brought this account out at camp concerning Josiah. Now this is Second Chronicles thirty five and twenty. All right, it says after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple. Nico King and um we did a history the chronicles we chronicled uh, a lot of Jake history on the GMS to the point channel which they took down well well I'm gonna create another one um just so brothers could kind of get familiar with uh you know when you make these new pages it's kind of hard to find them so you kind of have to do like two three four with names that brothers are familiar with so low well to create a GMS to the point two said so, after all this when Josiah had prepared the temple Nico King of Egypt came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates in the Battle of Carchemish is a famous battle. And Josiah went out against him, but he sent ambassadors to him saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, right? Because the Egyptians was going up to fight the Assyrians. Even though um Israel was was between that, okay, but they wouldn't want to fight with you. Uh, the king of Israel, Josiah, right? Which Josiah was a righteous king. It says, but, but but against the house wherewith I have war, for the Most High commanded me to take to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with the Most High who was with me, right? So look at that. He said, "This is a key." Then speaking to the king of Israel, telling you, "Your your God is with me right now." But Josiah wouldn't listen because Josiah was thinking, it's fucking heathen, the most high with your ass. Probably that's what he was thinking or whatever he was thinking. But scriptures don't say exactly, but that's just kind of extrapolation. You know, if a heathen's talking about God is with you, you're not going to fuck out of here, the most high with you. You know what I'm saying? As a Jake, you're like, God is with me. 
The most I have about Shimeon Shah is with me, not with you, goddamn heathen. But anyways, um, Josiah got in the midst of that. He got in the heat of that, and he's going to perish for it. That he destroyed thee not. He was warning you. He's, look, man, there's times when the Mosai is speaking directly through you, through a, through a goddamn heathen. All right, that happens. It says, nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearken not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of the Most High. So the scriptures is telling you exactly what was going down, that the Most High was talking through this guy, man, telling him, just like how, um, Jeremiah was telling Jake back in the day, like, look, man, the Lord is working with Nebuchadnezzar right now. Just fall back. Just listen to him. But Jake was hard-headed. It says, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servant, have me away, for I am sore wounded. And on his servants, therefore, took him out of the chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his father. All and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Yes, well, he was a he was a good king, but he fucked up at that point, man. He should have took heed that the Lord was dealing with this guy um, for that time and moment, you know. But again, all that was to further prophecies, because the Egyptians were later to go on to come back after winning that battle to take in um, one of the sons of Josiah captive back in Egypt. But everything was all about prophecy. You know, and these heathens shouldn't boast in the fact that the, when the Most High used them for a victory or some sort of, you know, triumph like that. But they do anyways, you know, especially the so-called white man. He thinks he's done everything on his own, you know. Well, this is Isaiah 10 and 15. It says, shall the axe boast itself against him that you with it, he with wherewith? Yeah, you go in your tool shed, or, you know, you go wherever you keep your tools. You know, you don't see a screwdriver praising and you know, worship for your hammer, all right, because it's just tools, you know, and each tool has its purpose. For example, you will never be able to screw in a screw with a hammer, all right, you know, you can't saw down a tree with a drill bit, because that tool was not created for that purpose. So the so-called white man was not created for the purpose of salvation. He was not created for the purpose of doing things righteous or anything like that. He was created for the purpose of destruction. It says, or shall the sword magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Right, so <laughs> a saw, you know how ridiculous that sounds trying to chop down a tree with a goddamn drill bit? Right? It sounds ridiculous. It sounds so far-fetched. It's the same way when you have these Israelites out there teaching that the so-called white man can make it, that the order is some type of salvation for the heathen. Because they were not created for that purpose. The Most High did not use these tools in his shed for that purpose, man. They're just different armies, man, of the Lord of Sabaoth. That's what Sabaoth means. The Lord of Sabaoth means the Lord of armies. All right? The Most High has his armies in heaven. The Most High has angels. The Most High even have his armies amongst the heathen. You know, that's the Lord. Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the, the sword of the Mosai is the wicked. In other words, for the nuclear missiles to destroy this place, the atomic bomb had to be made. You know, Jake ain't going to really put together no atomic bomb and shit like that. Jake's wickedness is on some other type of wickedness in the so-called white man. You know, because Jake is not going to, you know, pretty much destroy a whole land and the oceans and all that. Jake don't really do shit like that. You know, that's the grand, the grandiose forms of wickedness is done at the highest top with these heathens, man. The chief of them being Esau. And yeah, we get mad because, you know. Oppression makes a wise man mad, but we understand that, look, at the end of the day, this devil was ordained. He was anointed for the Most High for this purpose, to be a complete adversary to the Heavenly Father. That's what the Most High created him for, all right? To bring balance to the force, as they say in Star Wars, all right? Because you have to have wicked. There's always going to be wicked in the world, all right? There's always going to be evil in the world, To and that's to balance the righteousness. Even in the kingdom... 
we're going to be completely righteous, but you're going to still have them demonic spirits on the heathens to make them go off and do wicked things. And we're going to be there to judge them. So there's no taking wickedness out the earth, right? Because you have these spirits on the left hand that have to do their purpose. You know, same way us on the right hand have to do our purpose. Okay? That's the balance with the Most High. And that's what wisdom is all about. Romans 9 and 21, it says, Hath not the potter power over the clay? Right. So, you know, when a guy wants to make a particular uh, instrument or or some type of or pottery, he has the power to either build it up. He can make a nice vase or he can just say, fuck it, let me start over. He can do whatever he want. You know, it, it's not the other way around. The, the thing spinning is not telling the potter what it wants to be. The potter is dictating what particular vessels he's going to make. He says of the same lump to make one vessel onto di to honor. You can make a pot to piss in, you know. You could pick, you could make, you could, you could mold pretty much a, a a vessel where you throw your trash in. All right. Oh, so like, let me say the other way around because you said a vessel onto honor. All right. So you can make a vessel that holds water, holds wine, you know, a vessel that holds a cruise of oil. Um, you know, honorable vessel, man, a vessel that holds, you know, things that's that's charged for life, you know. It says, and another vessel on the dishonor. Now, that's what I mean. Now, the dishonor vessel is you can make a vessel that holds trash. You use it to hold the trash and throw the trash out or, you know, vessels that hold shit that's really not of no value, not of things of any honor. It's just there to hold those things. So, you have two types of vessels that he could create. You know, a vessel to hold your oil and all that. And you can have another vessel that's just there to hold trash. So the most I created Jacob, which is a righteous vessel, and Esau, out of the same lump, out of the same, it came out the same um, womb, all right, formulated in the same balls, all right, sorry to get graphic, but they were swimming around in the same balls of Isaac, and Isaac impregnated his wife, okay, and it went into the same womb. So that whole process, the most I was, it was the same, it came out the same lump. But he formed, he created two different fashions of spirits in that womb that were fighting against each other, man, from the womb. Damn near, Rebecca couldn't walk, man, all the tossing and turning, trying to choke each other out in the womb and kick each other and all that. Because before Jacob and Esau, there was twins in the world. People was having twins all the time, but it wasn't twins of two separate nations like that, man. You know, that's why I was so heavy. <laughs> That's why she had to inquire of the prophet. The prophet broke it down to her. Look, you have two nations in your womb, man. So that's how come there, was true, there truly will never be peace between Esau and Jacob. So-called white man and you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. No matter how much you try, no matter how many politically correctness you try to be and all that type of shit and marches. and The tool was not meant that way, man. There's a deep, deep. Um, hatred in each of our DNA, right? That you cannot recode. It's just programmed there from the Most High, man. That's why the scriptures speak about a perpetual hatred, man. And hypothetically speaking, let's say you bump into a so-called Edomite. He was cool as hell to you. Your entire life, he ain't caused you no harm, nothing like that. You knew the guy for years. And I'm talking about a straight up heathen. I'm not even talking about an Israelite foreigner. Let's say that's the case, right? He never said nothing to you, nothing like he's always cool to you and all that. Because you do bump into some heathens that's cool with you, right? But here's the shit, though. That does not mean they'll be saved. So <laughs> they could be as cool as, as they want with you, you know? They could freaking love you to death. Man, this is my God, man. I love this guy right here. Love you to death. Treat you well, all that. Guess what? They will not be saved because that's not what they were created for. So there's no way around it. Okay, I don't want to hear it, man, but I met cool white people because Jake will say that shit. Jake is just really overly compassionate, man, for the heathens. They just have a Stockholm syndrome and, you know, from being beaten over years and years with Caesar's love doctrine, that they're just trying to find loopholes for these heathens. But at the end of the day, that's not what the most I created these heathens for. Did not create them for salvation. All right, this is Ecclesiastes 7 and 13. Consider the works of the Most High, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked, all right? You can't, if the Most High created a screwdriver to screw in screws, you can't take that screwdriver, all right, 
to try to cut down a tree. It was not created for that purpose, right? So you can't take an instrument or a vessel or an anointed individual of the Heavenly Father that was created for one purpose or, or, or another and, say, and try to fashion it for your purpose. Okay, so they were ordained, they were anointed, all right? Not for salvation, but to fulfill the words of the Most High. And a lot of times that's what? For destruction, all right? And, you know, yeah, to bring us back into our homeland and such. Okay, because if you in, in hindsight, if you look at the greater grand scale of everything, the so-called white man had to do what he had to do to us, to take us in the, and put us in captivity and destroy us and break us down and all the type of shit that he did to us. Because what? Because the scriptures speak about, speak about a great deliverance out of the daughter of Babylon, which is America. So we had to have come here to fulfill all the prophecies and the words of the Most High. That ultimately, that when we get the kingdom, we could just unleash all the judgment that was promised to his ass too. And you heathens. Okay? So nothing is going out of the beat or out of whack or out of the out of the plans, if you will, of the Most High. Because as the scripture says, there's no counsel formed against the Heavenly Father. All right? So I thought I'd do that little lesson. You know, you hear anointed, you hear, you know, servant, you hear shepherd. And you like, damn, man, he's the most high. You know, you if you, the, the demons will hop on you and think, you know, the most high is working with them on that level in terms of deliverance. Well, I hope this and pray this lesson gave you the understand that, understanding that that is not the, the case. But rather, they are used to fulfill certain prophecies, prophecies of the Heavenly Father. With that... I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakaq, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You are came to Zadakim that do this thing in the most truth and sincerity. Shalom.